Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Backyard Buckets. And today, we're going to be talking about a guy who is slowly becoming one of my favorite players in the NBA. And as you can see, we're talking about Peyton Pritchard. Um, but before we get started, make sure to hit the like button. Make sure to subscribe. It really helps us out. really helps the video out and the YouTube algorithm. Um, and 91% or 92% of the people that watch our videos are not subscribed. So please make sure to subscribe. It will really help the channel out. And you won't miss any new NBA or just IRL college basketball videos. So with that being said, we are going to be talking about the gym rat himself, Peyton Pritchard. Um, actually, I had him as one of my draft sleepers, top five draft sleepers, um, before the draft. It's documented, it's in a YouTube video, so if you want to, go make sure to go check it out, out that video, goodness. Um, but this dude just went off against the Raptors the other day, um, and he was going off at Oregon the whole time, uh, so I wanna make a video about him. He's, he's turning into a beast, especially with Kimba being out. He's got more minutes than he would've if Kimball would have been playing the full year. Now, Peyton Pritchard is listed at six foot two, uh, but he's more like six foot. I mean, look at him compared to Fred Van Vliet, um, who's listed at like 5'11", um, and Malachi Flynn. They're like the same height. He might be a little bit bigger than Flynn. Um, but he's listed at 6'2", 190 pounds, so he's probably like six foot, 180. You know how those NBA lists, uh, how they list people. You get like 10 plus pounds and uh, two two extra inches uh, but yeah this is the dude he gym ratted his way into the NBA um, and just he's been balling I mean he wasn't even supposed to be like you go back a couple years and saying this dude's gonna drop 23 and 8 on the Raptors in a couple of days, people would have been like what but here he is came from West Lynn High School, I think I said that uh, correctly, um, in Oregon. He was a four-star guard, 45th overall player in his class, class of 2016. Um, at Oregon, he accomplished a lot of things. He was the 2019-2020 Pac-12 Player of the Year, two-time All-Pac-12 player, consensus All-American his senior year, and a Pac-12 Tournament MVP. Obviously, the season got cut short, so Oregon could have made an even better run in the tournament this year than they have and obviously that's where guys like him that's where their draft stock rises uh, even guys like Carson Edwards who's also on the Celtics um, but that didn't happen and he fell in the draft uh, resulting in the Celtics getting yet another steal uh, over his career at Oregon he averaged 14 points four rebounds and five assists but he played well his sophomore year could have went pro didn't came back had a bit of a stat decrease his junior year and then his senior year, he just went off. Um, he averaged 21 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds um, while winning. I'm pretty sure he was Pac-12 Player of the Year and the consensus All-American. Yeah, he was. Checking back over my notes there. <laughs> but as I said, Peyton was one of the guys that was hurt by the March, by March Madness getting canceled. Obviously, he would have increased his draft stock a lot. Oregon was inside the top 20, sometimes inside of the top 10 for most of the year last year. Um, would have been a four or five seed, maybe even a three seed. Um, so they were a good team, and they would have had a good run in March Madness. Obviously, coronavirus came in. Well, I don't know if I can say that. Call it China Plague. Um, came in and ruined March Madness. So his draft stock, like I said earlier, uh, didn't rise. It actually might have fell a little bit um, just because more – Overseas prospects were able to play more, and they were able to be scouted a little bit more. Um, so, like I said, fell down to the 26th pick right into the hands of the Boston Celtics, who just happened to have um, their all-star point guard, Kimball Walker, out with a knee injury, a still uh, stem cell injection. Uh, so he was out for the first few weeks of the season. Do not know when he's going to be back um, or uh, the first report said sometime in January, but we, there's been no update other than Danny Ainge saying he's been progressing well. So obviously, with the shortened 72-game season, um, Boston needed all the help they can get, especially at the point guard position. So Peyton Pritchard 
you know, worked his way into the rotation, worked his way into getting more and more minutes every game, and that all led – well, he'd been averaging – he's averaging 9.3 assists and two rebounds through eight games. The Celtics are currently 5-3 and three in the four seed in the East. Um, God, that's over James Wiseman. That's that's just nasty. Um, well, like I said, Hornets five and three, and Peyton Pritchard is, you could say, he's a big reason why. Did I say Hornets? I might have said I meant Celtics. Celtics are five and three, um, and yeah, the other night, January fourth, Peyton put the NBA on notice: twenty three points, eight assists, thirty two minutes of playing time. 8 for 13 from the field, 2 of 4 from 3. This dude bought out. He was 26 pick, and people were, like, questioning it when he got picked in the first round. Um, I thought he was going to be a second-round pick just because of his age. Um, but this is another example of a guy coming in from college and being pro-ready more than these guys that are drafted based off potential. And coming in and helping a team out right away. And props to Danny Ainge for realizing that he needs a guy that's more pro-ready than, you know, say they took like a project player or one and done or a guy from overseas with that pick. And Peyton doesn't come out and help him out right out of the gate. And they're now 3-5 and five instead of 5-3 and three without Kimba. Um, and they're maybe out of the playoff now. Obviously, 72 games, so it's a long season, but it's obviously not as long. God, that's a tough finish. But, yeah, once, once again, great job in the draft by Danny Ainge. Um, and I think he could be one of the main steals of the draft. Uh, obviously, it's very early. Too early to be calling all that. But he has looked really good so far. I said it already, but I'm going to say it again. This dude just outworked everybody. Um, like I said, he's a six-foot He's not the quickest. He can't jump the highest, but he's figured out how to get a shot off. He's crafty enough to get inside and get a shot off, and he can also knock it down from three. So a prototypical undersized guard in the NBA without the quickness. <laughs> um, but like I said, Fred Van Fleet is one of the best comparisons I could come up with this guy or for this guy, and so far he's looked a lot like Fred Van Fleet. And with the 26 pick, I'm sure the Hornets or the Celtics. God, why do I keep saying Hornets? The Hornets never have good draft picks. Why am I saying the Hornets? Uh, the Celtics are very happy with their selection and how it's turned out so far. So once Kimba comes back, we're not sure how long or how many minutes he's still going to be able to play. Um, even if he still will play, he might go down to the G League. But I think he's played his way into a roster spot and could maybe get some minutes over uh, who is it? who they got Jeff Teague in that lineup just because of his youth. Well, yeah, that is going to be it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Um, make sure to like and subscribe. Like I said, it helps the video out and the channel out a ton. And if you like basketball, make sure to go check out my Hornets, my league. Thanks for watching.